Hello my friends, welcome back to another painting tutorial. Okay, in this lesson, I'm gonna paint a lovely little seascape. Um, I have a lovely MDF board, okay? I primed it three times with undercoat, this regular white household undercoat, um, oil-based. I gave it a light rub with sandpaper and it's lovely and smooth. Um, I want to do a lovely seascape. Um, I have a lovely photograph of the seascape. It's ca caught my eye for a while and I just really would love to do it because the colours are just very striking. Now I do have a, um, a frame which I made. Let me show you. There. Let me just loosen this for a moment. I made that lovely frame. Um, it's still wet. It's only just been painted. Um, it's a beautiful frame that I made. It's touched dry actually. Um, I was just kind of messing around in my studio um, with some bits of wood and I went to my shed. I just kind of cut up all bits of timber that I had lying around and I just managed to put it together, this lovely little frame. Um, so I think this, let me see if I can turn it up for you. I think this will look fantastic now with my little seascape. Isn't that lovely? Um, let me show you the back of it. It's just now all bits of random bits of timber kind of just cut and glued together, okay? So there we go. Um, Little bits of this, little bits of that, that I had lying around in the shed, the garden shed. Um, just cut mitres and everything, and just kind of joined together with glue and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I think that's going to make a lovely little frame for this painting. It's going to be a beautiful little seascape. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. Um, it's going to be a lovely picture, a lovely painting rather. Um, if you're looking for a seascape tutorial, this is it. Lovely colours, nice and simple, but very, very eye-catching with a white frame, I think. So let's try it. Let's have a bit of fun. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you for uh, subscribing as well, more importantly, okay? Let's crack on and have some fun with this. I'm eager to get going. I have my paints out. I don't have my paints out, actually. I'll put my paints out, and we'll um, do some painting. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go, my friends. There's a reference photograph. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, just, it's just very, very, very striking. The colours are very striking. Um, and I love just this wave coming in. It's just gorgeous. It's just my type of a scene. Um, now, I'm just going to do a very quick sketch of... Now, by the way, I have masking tape across my horizon line, okay? Um, but I'm just going to do a very quick sketch of this form here, okay? Just a very, very loose sketch um here it comes down like that round a bit of a curve in it there it's probably even a bit high but look just to give us some little idea of where we're going with this and okay so it goes up like that this is quite nice i like this one the way it goes up like that it comes out and remember just to kind of give these a little wiggle okay uh, we have a little wave, and what I like about these waves is that there's no kind of splash up on top of them. They're just starting to form. Do you know the kind of wave I'm talking about? They're just starting to kind of kick in as they're coming by the, the beach. So look, that's fine. That's all we need to do. That's it. I'll tell you what colours I have. I have titanium white, cadmium yellow pale, naples yellow, cerulean blue, magenta, phthalo blue, Burnt Umber, Lamp Black, and Burnt Cyanide. And that's it. I also have some tissue and I have some turpentine with a little linseed oil. Um, right. So, I suppose we could crack on. I'm not going to oil the MDF, okay? Normally, I would put a little bit of linseed oil over a sky. Um, if it was canvas, then yes. But because it's MDF and it's so smooth, I'd have no problem getting lots of paint on this fairly quickly, okay? So, no oil on the canvas this time. Now, I'm getting a big brush. Nice big soft brush. And I'm going to start with the bright colour, okay? Um, so to save me, so I don't have to kind of contaminate my brushes as I'm going. I'm going to start with the light yellow colour here, then clean my brush and go to blue. So let's start. I'll dampen my brush. I'm going to take some white, some cadmium yellow, just a little, some Naples yellow. That warms it nicely. Let me just try that see how that gives us a lovely glow now it's only a tiny little bit it really is it's only one spot really just in the corner and i'm putting on a very very light coat of paint very light now into that i'm going to take a touch of magenta 
tiny touch with the corner of a brush look a tiny little bit you can really see how i'm putting on the bare amount of paint really i am the bare amount um magenta a little naples yellow and it's going to warm as it comes across just along the horizon line there like that look and i, I can't emphasize enough how little paint i have on this um normally people would say it with oils oh put lots of thick paint on really you don't have to okay a little bit goes a long way with oils so there we go i'm going to leave it at that because it goes up into a blue then doesn't it so the very tricky part about this is mixing this yellow with blue you don't want any green forming if I put blue across here, it's immediately going to turn green. So I'm going to take a very light color, let's say some white and a tiny touch of magenta. And I'm going to put that little bit of color just along over this yellow. Okay. Now let me just get this reference photograph back up. It popped off of my screen. Uh, let me find the correct one. Now it has to be the right one. There we go, right. Because I have a couple of reference photographs on my phone next to me here. If I press on it by accident, it kind of goes on to the next one. So look, titanium white and a little touch of magenta. Now, I don't care if I have to make two tutorials out of this, two, two parts, part one and part two. I just want to do this nice. I want it to be really nice. What I have here now, you probably can't see, is a very bright, whitey pink. It's really white, very, very bright. I'm just going to soften it into that yellow there, look. So we get a nice transition from a yellow to white, okay? Well, you probably can't see that very much at the moment. Then I'm going to just clean that brush, and I'm going to go into some slightly richer yellow. And what I want to do with that is I'm even take a touch of magenta. The yellow on its own is very rich and very saturated, so a touch of magenta just tones it down ever so slightly, okay? I'm going to put that nice rich color just across here. I'll take a little touch more yellow in that with some white because we have a very bright color just around there. Now, look, you don't have to go to too much trouble with this. You don't have to go this fancy with all of this. You can just pop a little bit of yellow in. It's absolutely fine as well. You can just do that if you like. I'm going to clean my brush very well now. Dip it in turpentine and give it a really good rub just to get the majority of that yellow out of the brush, okay? Now, that's fairly, fairly clean. Spotless again. Let's go to blues, okay? Let's take some titanium white, and let's go into some phthalo blue. Again, the richest color on the palette, phthalo blue. A tiny bit goes a long way. Look at that. The tiniest little bit. Phthalo blue and white. I think I'll just start with that for now. I'll start putting that in along here. And the MDF is just really, it's so smooth. Um, it's lovely stuff to work on, it really is. You should try it. And this is just a spare piece of MDF I had in my shed. I just made, made sure it was nice and dry and I gave it a really good prime. Three or four coats of white primer, okay? That should do it, just to seal it. So I'm going to just actually now, I'm going to actually just start mixing a little bit more color just to help me along quicker. Um, Thalo blue. I'm then going to go into some cerulean as well. Because that beautiful greeny blue in the ocean, I want to complement that in the sky as well. Little touch of thinners again, just to thin it slightly. And that helps it just flow along much better, you see? Look at that. Lovely color. Lovely greeny bluey color. Now, I will try and simplify this for you, um, just to make it easier for you to follow, but I am going to really make this a nice tutorial, all right? Um, it's not one that I'm going to just kind of flick through very quickly. If I have to stop and come back another day to finish it, that's what I'll do, but I want to really make this nice for that frame because it's a lovely frame, very eye-catching, and it needs a nice painting, I think. 
Um, when I make a good frames like that, really good quality frames like that, I don't want to put just anything into it. Do you, do you understand what I mean? I want to really put something nice into it. Now, Thalo Blue, a touch of magenta, coming up here, and you see that very dark colour up there. It gets very dark, doesn't it, over in that corner. In fact, right along the top, it gets very dark. It sort of comes down at the corners, doesn't it? I love that effect. Um, I presume it's just the type of camera that was used for the photograph, but I love that effect where it's very dark on the top edges. It really draws your eye into the centre of the painting. Again, magenta, cerulean blue, or sorry, magenta and phthalo blue, and a touch of black this time. And let's go up there and try that. Lovely dark colour. So what I tend to do is I kind of cut across the corners like this, okay? And then I just kind of just flatten it out. You see? Go right across it then. I'm going to soften that right in just to get rid of any directions of the brush strokes. I'm just going to get that bit of blue off my brush. I have a little bit of blue stuck on my brush there. And just keep going over and over this as much as you like until you feel you're happy with the amount of blending. Let's pick up another bit, put another little bit up here. I'm not going to bring it too far down because I don't want to go too far down to that white, okay, that whitey yellow colour. So I'm just being careful not to drag it too far down. You know, take a look now. Okay, we're getting there. I will add a nice bright colour down at this side here, kind of a nice bright pinky mauve. Now let's take, I'll take the rest of that white, take some magenta. And you see, I already have a touch of blue. I'll take a touch of that blue. Soften that just there. And then bring it up. Now, I need more white. So what I'm going to do then is start softening this across into that yellowy colour. And what I need to do for that is just to have a very, again, a very light pink. Okay? So... Some of that, some of that pinky colour, even a bit of that yellow, just so they kind of soften together nicely. So you can see now, I can soften that through the yellow without making a green, very gently. So we have that lovely transition then, don't we? Okay, I'm cleaning the brush again, and I'm going to just fill this area in. I'm going to use white with some cerulean blue. And I'm going to take just a hint of magenta as well. The reason I'm putting hints of magenta into this is really simply for that yellowy area, okay? I don't want any colours clashing in there, so I'm putting that little hint of pink in there to neutralise the chances of any green. So plenty of pink in your blue will prevent any greens kind of on your canvas. Do you understand what I mean? Get me a good bit of white out here because I'm going through a lot of white now, to be fair. Now let's take some white again. And a little touch of magenta. Tiny, tiny bit. And I'll take a touch of Naples yellow. Use that nice pinky colour just there. You see how that gives a lovely glow in the sky? So now, you can see we've everything blended lovely together and no green anywhere. Isn't that lovely? I will be breaking that up now with some clouds and stuff like that as well, so not to worry too much about that, okay? I'm going to go very dark now up in the corners. I really want to capture that dark, moody feeling up in the corner. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue again, some cerulean blue, some magenta. Plenty of magenta, don't be shy. Make it nice and, cre nice and pinky and warm. And then a hint of black, just to really darken that down. Okay, let's try it. There we go. 
I think that's better, isn't it? I'll even add a bit more magenta. There we are. Softening that right in. And what I love about the MDF board is it has a lovely sort of a drag on it when you're brushing it along. There's a beautiful kind of a drag in the brush. Um, it's not as oily as canvas, okay? Uh, it just sort of it pulls the brush away from you as, as you're painting. It kind of pulls the brush away from you. It has a beautiful sort of a drag on the board. So it really allows you to press down nice and hard with your brush to get the brush strokes across. It really does. It's lovely for, for, for that. It just has a wonderful feeling, this MDF. Um, you should definitely try it. If you have any old bits of MDF, just try it. Cut a piece up, give it a prime with some old, you know, some old undercoat or whatever you have, and just try it. Honestly, you will be very pleasantly surprised. I promise you will. Now I'll take a little bit of white. I'm going to soften that down. As it comes down over the yellow, I'm just making sure I add plenty of magenta into this colour. Because I don't want any of those greens. No, you soften that right across there. And gently, hardly touching the canvas when I get to the yellow look. Just hardly touching it. Okay, I'm happy enough with that. Now I'm going to start breaking up with some clothes. I'm going to start breaking some of this up. I got myself a nice medium flat brush, nice and clean. Um, one good point is to overturn your tissue because that's a lot of blue. Um, when you're painting white clothes and stuff like that, you don't want to be picking up blue off of the tissue. So I go first for this lovely dark cloud we have over here. Now I hope you can see everything okay, you can. I'm going to make a nice rich plum for that cloud over there, okay? A nice kind of a rich sort of a plummy colour. Let's take some magenta, some cerulean, and I'm just going to take a touch of black, okay? You can see it's sort of, it's almost like a soft grey kind of a plum colour, isn't it? Take a little bit of white. Now that's a bit bright, so let's just keep adding another touch of the black, another touch of magenta. And we have a lovely grey, okay? Just pop a little grey cloud in here. It just sort of disappears off, doesn't it? A bit more pink. I'll warm it just ever slightly. And just bring it across here. Like that, you see? The way I'm just you see the way I'm just using my corner of the brush. I'm just kind of putting it on a little leaving sort of dance away and flick away. That's really all I'm doing. Just like that, look. Nice simple cloud off in the distance. Now I'm going to add to that a touch of burnt umber. Just going to make it slightly, slightly on the browny side, okay? Just for some of those darks in front of that sunny area. Okay, so another thing I'm going to do here with this is I'm going to take some of this blue. I'm going to make a nice deep, deep, deep purpley, shadowy colour just for the back of one of those clouds. And I'm just going to go, because the sun is underneath it, I'm going to go up on top here, look. Dab a little touch of dark up there. And I think that's fine. Could even add one or two small ones. Take a hint of brown. And just maybe add one or two little tiny ones creeping in just underneath. Now, I know a lot of this may be covered with the frame. Well, I don't have to go crazy trying to get that perfect. That's enough. What I'm going to do is just, while I'm in this corner, I'm going to take a small brush, grab some white, 
and I'm going to just try to pop a little suggestion of the sun in just around here look just a tiny suggestion that's all And look, you may not even see this from where you are. But, I, you know, I can come back to it again later and brighten it again. Because what happens with the oils is it just it tends to kind of mix into the colours underneath. So, you know, you may have to do this a few times. And, okay, let me just look again. I'm going to darken with some yellow and a little touch of magenta. I'm just gonna darken down along here, okay? Just with a little bit of darker color. Just to give it a little something in the corner there, that's all. And then maybe just a touch of cadmium as well. So look, all these little things now will make a difference. And you can see I'm really only putting on the tiniest amount of paint on this. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to go at this over and over again because I'll just ruin it, won't I? Let's come over and do some clouds over on this side. And these are nice bright clouds, okay? Let's get a nice bright white and a hint of magenta. And these are nice pinky clouds over here. So a very bright whitey pinky colour. And let's just pop one or two like that. Again, the corner of the brush, you see. Just like that, and I'm leaving that then just soften back into the bluey colour. And really all I'm doing is just sort of tapping, tapping the brush in. Um, that's really all I'm doing, okay? So let me show you. Look, I'm just sort of rubbing it from side to side. And you can see it's just sort of picking off little dots of paint off of my brush here and there. And as I come over... It's just going to kind of soften the way off into the sky, you see? Disappear. Just like that. Little suggestions of some little clouds just way off in the distance. Just sort of letting my brush dance around. And at this stage now, my brush, it's kind of almost freestyling itself. I'm just moving it around and letting the paint touch the canvas here and there. Okay, just like this, you see? Just letting it sort of pop off, move it around, and just kind of soften it in here and there. You don't have to go softening too much, but just a little bit here and there, you see? Soften it back into the sky. You can begin to see now what I'm trying to go, you know, just kind of popping a little bit of coverage up there, here and there in the sky. I'm going to take a little of the mauve colour, because there's a lovely mauve colour up there, which I can see. I'm just going to start popping a little touch of that mauve in here and there, just to act as, perhaps, you know, it could be a bit of shadow just on these clouds, here and there. And I see a really dark mauve colour down at the bottom down here as well. It's a lovely dark. I'm just going along the bottom and softening this sort of through here and there into some of those clouds. You see what I mean? Now you can soften this back in with a soft kind of blender brush if you like. Um, you don't have to just leave. You could just leave the white if you're a little bit nervous about putting on darks on the sky could just leave the white clouds as they are they're absolutely fine as well 
Now I'll take a soft brush. I'm just going to soften some of these away. Because it is really nice and soft looking on the photograph, isn't it? So I'm just going to soften some of these out. Just in by the shadows. Soften some of the brush strokes away. And there we go. Next, I'm going to put a nice kind of a white streak across the sky over here. I think it needs a nice white kind of a streak. Um, and I might put some light on some of those as well. So I'll take some white and I'll take a touch of the yellow. And I want to just put a little touch of that white yellow underneath. Because it's in a yellowy area, it's going to have a hint of a whitey yellow for highlights, okay? Because the sun is reflecting off of these clouds. And I'm then going to soften those as well. So I'm just going to grab my brush and try and soften it as best I can without dragging the paint too far across on my canvas, okay? See what I mean? Like so. Now, a lovely kind of a white streak coming down. It's a light blue kind of a streak, isn't it? I'll take some cerulean with a little white. And I'm going to pop beautiful white streaky kind of a cloud just coming across over here. Let's try this. So it comes across and it just sort of disappears over into the horizon, doesn't it? A bit like that. Pick up some white. So see what I did? I'm just literally dragging my brush at a slight angle, keeping it straight. And just bringing it down slightly. I love those types of clouds where they just sort of streak across the sky like that. They're really lovely. Add a bit more white as it comes down. Bring it right down into the horizon and leave it disappear. Okay, just like that. So doesn't that now create a nice little horizon going into the middle of the painting? It creates some perspective. Let's take off the masking tape. This is going well. I like this. It's a nice subtle sky. It's not overpowering. Let's get all this filled in. Maybe do all these waves and we leave this to part two. All this lovely little intricate work. We leave that to part two, yes? How does that sound? So let me get a big brush. Nice flat brush. Dampen the brush. And straight away I'm seeing cerulean blue, phthalo blue and magenta. So I'm seeing those three colours in here, also with that bit of yellow, okay? So when you're painting like this, it's a good idea to kind of look at the photograph and say to yourself, okay, what colours can I see? And then just take those colours and start mixing. Just have a bit of fun. Let's try some cerulean blue. And I'm going to make this very dark now just along the top there to really contrast against that sky. Cerulean blue, some magenta. Thalo blue. But it's a really greeny kind of a colour, isn't it? There's a lot of green. It's a greeny blue. So thalo blue on its own would be too strong for this. So the cerulean is perfect. Now, if you don't have cerulean, you can just take some thalo blue with a touch of cadmium yellow. That will give you a very similar colour as well. Okay, let's take a look. Now, I'm going to start, what I'll do is take some cerulean again. I'm going to take a hint of cadmium yellow and then some white. Because I'm going to bring this colour over by that sunny side. So this lovely greeny, turquoisey colour.
Now, a little tip for you, okay? If you have shaky hands and you're trying to get a nice straight kind of a line like this, um, lean down hard on your brush. That's the easiest way. So lean down hard, look. Get the brush just to the edge, lean hard, and drag it slowly across. And hold your breath while you're doing it, because if you're talking like me, your hands will move. There we go. Okay. We'll just get some of that in there. Very whitey colour here, so I'm not too worried about that just yet. But over here, certainly, a nice rich dark colour. Let's get some phthalo blue. Magenta. And black. I'm thinking that colour over here. Yes? There we go. No, I'm just going to flick that across side to side. Soften that in. I come down to around here. That's where the dark water kind of stops and it goes light. So we come down as far as there. I come across here. Now it gets very whitey green over here, doesn't it? Very whitey, kind of a turquoise colour. Let's get plenty of titanium white. I'm adding some tinners into this now as well, you see? Just a little bit. And then I'm getting cadmium yellow, cerulean blue, and I have a lovely whitey greeny kind of a hue over there. You see that? Just where the sun is coming down, it's very whitey green. So this is just all the base colours now. I'll be adding more into this as I go, okay? There's no there's no worries. Um, this line here now, I know I went right down here. This line will be further down, I think. I will make that slightly further down later. But look, let's just go with this for now. I'll get some more pink into that. For me, this is the most important part of the painting, rather than focusing on details, because... If you can get these back color, background colours right, um, after that, it's fairly easy to add colours in. Now, I've took, took a little bit of magenta and burnt umber. I'm going to pop a little bit of that in, just here and there, just to kind of help with the sandy colour underneath. Because you can see it's very shallow as it comes in. So we've just sort of pinky browny grey kind of a colour sneaking in just over here. See that? But again, this is the early stages. And all these little colours combined will make a big difference. Now, I am going to go and darken over here as well. It needs to be a lot darker. I'll take magenta, or sorry, cerulean blue, phthalo blue, and a little black. And a little magenta. Every time I look at this corner on the photograph, I can see a pinkish, a dark, dark blue with a hint of a pink in it. It's, it's a kind of a strange colour to get, but now you probably can see it, but I can see a little hint of warmth in that dark side over there. I'm just going to go along like this and just side to side, okay? Just let my brush hit and miss side to side. I'll do a little bit of it over in this corner as well because what you don't want in a seascape like this is completely different colours. So I'll bring a little touch of that colour to this side and that will just help balance the painting, I think, just a little bit. So look, that little bit of pinky blue just creeping in. Just here and there, look. I think that does kind of help balance the painting a little bit better. Now I'm going to add some black with some phthalo blue and again magenta. And I'm going to come up here and put some really nice darks in. And you see the way the MDF, it just allows you to kind of soften the colour right through. 
lovely and easily. Um, if this was a canvas, you would kind of see the grain of the canvas as you're going along. Some people don't like that, and they may, may find that quite annoying sometimes. So the MDF is just perfectly smooth, so you can really soften colours out. See? It just makes a huge difference, really, to your painting. Now, a little bit of blue. You need to get some phthalo blue just in here and there as well. Look. And already this is starting to form the waves off in the distance, kind of the bits of waves that are crashing around. So just by doing this with this flat brush, we're already getting some nice movement in the water. Isn't that right? Okay. I need to stop and stand back and take a look. There we go. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough so far with this. The next thing I'm going to do is, if you notice around here, there's lots of white. You see the highlight part of the ocean where the, where the light is hitting the water? That bright whitey greeny colour, I'm going to focus on that next. I'm going to try and get that in. I'll switch to a smaller brush. And I'm going to get that in before I put my dark waves in then. So let's take some white cerulean blue. And a little, you could try Naples yellow as well, actually. But lots of white in this. Even more Naples, you can see it's almost a yellowy, whitey, kind of a turquoisey colour. So I think plenty of Naples yellow in this will help. So let's go. Let's pop a little bit of that in there, like that. And you can see now I'm just sort of filling in the sections between those dark waves. You see those lights? That's what I'm focusing on. And also by adding this whitey, greeny colour, it means we can put in our yellows for reflections much easier. So we have a nice bright base. And if I tried to put in those yellow reflections on a dark blue, it would be very, very difficult and very time consuming. It would take a lot of time. So by doing it over a light base, just makes life so, so much easier. A little bit more Naples yellow in that. I'm just going to pop these. Always make sure when you're painting a seascape like this, make sure your brush strokes are completely horizontal, okay? Don't go at an angle or anything like that. Just completely horizontal, left to right. And I'm going to come across here as well, just a little bit. So you can see now the beautiful light hitting the water. Now, as it comes across, I'm going to make it more of a bluey, a whitey bluey colour. So let me get some phthalo blue with some white. And I pop a little of that in. A little bit more blue, perhaps. Pop a little touch of that in there. There and there, look. Maybe a touch of cerulean. Let's try cerulean. Lovely turquoise colour. If I was painting any seascape, I would definitely have cerulean blue on my palette. It's just the most gorgeous turquoise colour. It really, really is. There's so much you can do with cerulean blue. And even for landscapes, it makes beautiful greens as well. So there we go. Now, so I'm fairly happy with that so far. Next, I'm going to start putting in those beautiful dark waves. See those lovely waves? And for this, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to go to a large stubby brush, okay? Something with a nice flat edge. You see that lovely edge we have? That's perfect. So, I'm going to take some thinners. My thinners has gone. So, a little bit of thinners in there. And here we go. I need to put some cerulean on my palette just up there. A little bit of that. Let's have some fun with these waves. Now, okay, everybody paints waves in a different way. Um, some people are very frightened of painting waves like this. This is probably the simplest method of creating a nice wave. Okay, let's dampen the brush, dry it off. Um, now, because I'm going onto this wet paint, I don't need any thinners really in my brush. So I generally, when I start with a new brush, um, I dampen it with some thinners and dry it. That just kind of, Sticks the hairs together like that, you see. 
otherwise it's very bushy. So just dampen it, dry it, you have a lovely sharp edge. Okay, dark. Let's get some phthalo blue. Some cerulean blue. And I'm going to put a hint of mauve, or sorry, magenta into this. Now I'm also along for the fact that when I put this on, okay, it's going to start lightening when I put it into this lighter colour. So I'm thinking about that. So I want to go nice and dark. I'm going to take a hint of black into that colour as well. And because they're a lovely greeny hue, I'm going to take a hint of cadmium yellow as well. So now we have a very dark kind of a turquoisey blue, rich dark, dark colour. I'm going to start with, let's start with the back ones up here. You see these? So what I'm going to simply do is just put a few little brush strokes across like that, okay? No, I'm just letting the brush dance across in a relatively straight line. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Uh, there's another one there. And of course, I'm going to use my artistic license. I'm not going to copy this exactly. I will put my own twist on this as well. But you see what I'm doing, right? I'm flicking it down and across. Look, little curves. So I'm not just putting a straight line in, I'm bringing it down and across like this. And then you see what you can do is you can just pull it out and you can kind of soften it into the water, creating natural little ripples and movement in the water, you see? Now with these ones up here, you could just, because they're so far away, they won't have that effect, but just soften them along here and there, look. You're literally just creating the impression of some dark waves off in the distance coming in. That's literally all you're doing. That's what I want to try and achieve. So let's go again. Let me get some more phthalo blue with some cadmium yellow. Some magenta. So just keep going until you have the right shade, the shade you think you're happy with. I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to get this nice big one in down here because that's kind of the primary wave, isn't it? So I'm just going to look. I'm just going to flick it down and across. See? Then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it goes straight. See? Like that. And that's how I create my waves. It's nice and simple but very effective. Now, as it comes across past here, it's going to start going the other way, look. I don't know if you could see that on the photograph or not, but it starts to kind of kick out the opposite way a little bit. I'll take a little touch more blue. Because I can see a beautiful blue inside this one here. So I'm going along. And I'm dragging it outwards, and then look, I'm going to create these lovely little ripples in the water. You can really see how the MDF board is allowing me to soften these out lovely without catching the grain of a canvas, for example. You can see how it's really allowing me to really drag them out and soften them across. It does make such a difference, it really does. So I'll take some magenta. I'm going to put a touch of magenta in on this side over here. Soften that down and across. And I'm also going to just put one or two slight ones in the background as well over that. Just kind of softening the colours in as you go. Let's take another little bit here. Go for the darker colour over here because we already have a dark background, so a slightly darker colour will work better. Put a couple of dark ones in. 
and I'm only just suggesting them, you see what I mean? I'm just putting a tiny, tiny amount. And your, your eyes are not going to naturally filling in the missing pieces and the spaces. Okay? That's what happens when, when with painting. Um, when a customer or a client looks at the painting, their imagination is filling in the missing pieces, even though you might not be able to see every single piece of the painting. Um, even if you're just suggesting a few details, the customer's eyes will kind of automatically fill in those details themselves without even realizing it. That's what I love about painting. Um, you know, it's it's about what the customer or the person or yourself sees when you stand back. You notice all of these little things. So okay, I have that nice dark one in there. Now that's lovely. I like that. Just softening it gently across the top. Just like so, look. As it comes across, I'm going to just change the colours ever so slightly over here. I'm going to take some burnt umber and magenta and a little black, okay? So because they're going into the light area where the sun is, that natural yellow colour of the sun is going to warm the colour slightly. So it's not going to be like um, a cold blue. It's going to be a nice warm, warm colour. So I'm taking magenta, burnt umber and black. That's giving me the sort of brownie plum sort of a hue. And I'm going to come over here and just start popping some of that in. Here and there, you see? Soften it through here and then just start adding a little bit of it across. So I'm then going to take some black on its own into that colour and just put some of that black in over here. And gently bring it across, look, just so it's blending slightly across and it's not just stuck in one spot. Do you understand what I mean? So I'm now just going to kind of soften all this across here. Just a touch, not going too far with it. So you can see now how we have changed kind of colour as we're going along slightly. But you can just keep this simple now. You don't really have to, you know, go to a lot of trouble with this yourself if you're not confident. I'm going to take a soft brush, okay? And I'm going to soften just the ends of this. Look, I'm just going to soften it out just to create some nice soft lines in the distance. I'm just going to rub my soft brush across all of this. I do want it nice and soft. I don't want kind of very sharp, crisp lines on the, the MDF board. So nice and soft. Look at that. Isn't that better? So already we have the basis of our seascape, the dark, the lights. We've all that kind of stuff done. I'm going to move on now and just start putting in some of the, um, I think that would finish part one nicely, don't you? Down here, we have a lovely warm colour. I'm going to try and get that in, actually. I think I'll try and get that in first. So if you notice down by the waves where they're breaking here, this beautiful yellow colour, I'm going to try and put that in. Clean brush, and I paint over some of this as well. Um, a clean brush, let's take some. Naples yellow, cadmium yellow. Try and get some without the green, I suppose. And magenta. That should give us a nice kind of a, a warm, soft, warm, orangey hue. Almost like a dirty, muddy, yellowy colour. Just keep going until you're happy with the colour you have. And a little white. Okay, let me try that. It doesn't matter that I'm going into this turquoise -y colour now because I'm going to be putting a lot of this on. So I will cover it very well. Bring that down a little bit more. 
And let's go back into it again. Cadmium yellow, magenta. Going for this very soft, sort of a pinky color. And it's just here, isn't it? I won't go too far. There's no need for me to go very far with this. Then I'll take some Naples yellow, maybe with some white, and pop a little of that in as well, especially up in the lighter areas here. Look, I'm just letting the brush take off a little tiny bit of that color just here and there where the light is, softening it outwards and across. So we're building up now, I think, very nicely our lights. The next thing I'm going to do is brighten some of that turquoisey blue color. Get some cerulean blue. And I'll take a nice, nice bit of white. Then some Naples yellow. Okay, I'm going to go up here and start popping some of that in. And you can see it's just, I'm being very sort of loose with all of this now. I'm not going to too much extreme with this. Just brighten some of these areas up there. And you may feel that you're going over some of the work you've just done, but it's just about getting it right, just the right amount. I want to really capture the light on this water. It's very important for me. Okay. I might even come across up on top as well, just a little bit with that. Look. Just across a little bit more. There we go. I'm happy enough with that. I'll put an extra bits of dark in there now as well in part two, I think. Um, but I think for now, I'm just going to concentrate on the nice yellowy sections of the ocean up there. So I'll take some cadmium yellow, some white, and a little magenta. Um, I don't want to use cadmium yellow just on its own. I think that would be too too vibrant. I'll start first with some of this lovely sunlit colour. Look, just popping it along here and there. Just remember, keep your brush strokes horizontal, okay? Left to right, left to right, all the time. So we're starting to get these colours in, just starting. Now, it's very slow, I know, if you, just let's take our time and let's just do it right. Um, it can be slow, but I don't want to rush this too much. I do want to get this looking nice. I'm going to pop a little bit of pink in here and there, because I do see a nice suggestion of little touches of pink here and there as well in that. So it's kind of mixing with different colours, look, lots of different shades mixing through. 
My final step then later will be just with a palette knife, putting very rich highlights in here and there. That's really the kind of the final step, I think, later. Now, some white cadmium yellow, and just again, adding a few more of those lights in here and there. Okay, so I think, my friends, I may leave this. Um, I might just add some darks in over on this side because I feel like I've lost some of the darks over here. So I'm going to pop a few darks in. Magenta, phthalo blue. And it may even be a little bit pinker, but it doesn't matter. I just want to pop a suggestion of some nice dark movement over here in the water. That's all. Try and get back some of those darks that we lost from earlier. That's fine. Okay, I don't need to really go further than this, I don't think. And for last. My last step, I'm going to take a very dark colour and just put a very dark, rich, bluey colour just here. You see that very dark, rich we have just in there? So pop that in there just to really catch your eye. Doesn't that make a much nicer contrast? I think it does. And I'll stop it there, my friends. I'm happy enough with that. Very, very happy. Uh, that's part one finished. Part two, we'll have all this lovely sand and all this lovely foam, all of our detail going in. So, um, yes, that's it. There we go. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed part one. Stay tuned for part two coming up very, very soon. Um, I'm really itching now to keep painting. I'm trying to stop myself from carrying on, but I, I have to stop. Um, it's a good idea just to stop midway through a painting, go and have a coffee, stand back, look at the painting and see where you're going for your next stage. All right, I'll see you very soon. Thank you for tuning in and happy painting. God bless.